Hello everybody, this is Mr. Smith. Welcome to Art History Unit 1 Global Prehistoric. I want to shoot through some of these pieces so that uh, you guys begin to get the idea about um, how to take notes in terms of um, thinking about form, how form relates to content, how content um, and form um, are related to context or, or the other way around. Um, and then finally, how these things help us to try and understand the function of a piece. One of the things that's really um, kind of cool to start with is that um, when we're talking about prehistoric objects, when we're talking about prehistoric objects, the concept of prehistoric means before history. And you'll notice, notice that when you look at history, history is actually the words his story combined right, which is very, you know, like patriarchal, I know. Um, but the the big idea here is that it's it's got this notion of story here. And and I want, whenever you guys see that, whenever you guys think about that, I want you guys to remember that um, these, these are really about what's written down. So when we say prehistory, what we mean in many ways is before a time period in which we wrote things down. Because this is a period that's before uh, things were written down, we have to use other methods for figuring out the content content and the context. And that also means that we're going to end up doing a whole lot of guessing. Um, and we're going to be guessing at um, the content. We're going to be guessing at the function. Context, we can use science. We can use carbon dating. Um, we can use some other techniques and things like that. Um, and so one of the things I want to point out is that like in this first unit, in the global prehistoric, the things I really want you guys to focus on um, are really formal practicing your formal analysis tools because you can formally analyze anything. You can use a visual analysis and look at things. Um, any, you know, anybody can do that using the tools and the vocabulary that I've given you. Um, and then the other thing you really want to focus on is the context, right? Um, the sort of things that we can prove. We know for a fact that this was found in Namibia, right? We know for a fact, uh, using carbon dating, that it's dated to somewhere between 25,000 to 25, uh, 25,500, 25,300 BCE. By the way, just so you guys know, if this is back in 25,000 BCE, uh, and today we're living in 2020 CE, got cut off there. That means that zero is uh, somewhere around here. So if you want to know how old this is, this isn't 25,000 years old. This is 25,000. That only gets you to zero plus another 2,000. So this is a 2,700 year old object. Um, so that's part of your context, right? This is from 25,000 BCE. It's the Apollo 11 stones. It's in Namibia. Namib Namibia is in South Africa. It was found in a cave. Uh, it's called the Apollo 11 stones because it was discovered at the time of the Apollo 11 mission, which means that it's very poorly named, uh, in my opinion. Um, and this was um, some people a very long time ago scratching things out using charcoal. So the medium in that sense is stone and charcoal. And medium, um, medium comes to us from the word media, right? Or like mixed media, which is basically just asking about the materials, the materials used to create a work of art. And you need to know that every single time um you you do this thing sort of thing you need to know what the materials are let's do some real 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 quick formal analysis here um we know that this figure looks like it might be some kind of animal right so we can kind of see we can see it's walking on four legs right um it looks like it might have a little bit of genitalia i'm not sure that's important but it helps us to identify it as an animal um and we get this outline so it's this uh is a flat two-dimensional shape in the form of an animal. Uh, I just spelled animal wrong. That really only gives us the profile. It really only gives us the profile. And one of the things that historians and art historians are really curious about is the fact that the legs in the front are shorter than the legs in the back. And what that makes people think is that the legs in the back might actually be human legs, in which case this would be an example, and this is kind of going into content. Content is it's an animal, uh, but if these legs are in fact human legs, then this is an anthropomorphized 
anthro. This is a long word. Pa. Uh, I, you know what? Let me let me do it in red down here at the bottom, and that might work because I want all of you guys to get this word. It's a great word. We need to use it a lot. Anthro. Anthro means human, like anthropology. Uh, pomorphized. And morph means to change, right? So it's anthropomorphized. It's changed into a human. Um, we might also use the word anthropomorphic, which um, basically just means um, it looks like or it's changing into or it has the features of a human. So they might give animals the features of a human. So there's some form and there's some context that I've given you. It's really, really fast, but that's all we need to do for today just to get the idea. You guys need to have notes that you can write these on wherever that may be so that you can keep them throughout the year and study them before our tests and our AP test. Thank you guys.